grab his wrist, this grip break if I need to. Two hands on one, pushing toward his face. Use my hip to disrupt his balance by pushing his hip away and pulling this arm across my body. All right, so in our first series, we went over uh, basic searching and handcuffing techniques for a suspect that's compliant with our requests. So if I ask him to turn around, put his hands behind his back, he complies. If I ask him to kneel, put his hands on the back of his head, he complies. If I ask him to lie down in a prone position, he's compliant. This next block of instruction is gonna be based on a suspect that's refusing to go down to the ground. Either they're f actively resisting, uh, physically trying to fight you, or otherwise refusing to follow your commands to get in a position where you can safely search them and handcuff them. One of the core concepts that we teach for any type of takedown or contact is law enforcement is avoiding this area inside the arms. If I can stay outside the elbows, it's virtually impossible for him to grab me. It's much, much harder for him to strike me and do things to me. And this allows me to push away, create distance, wait on backup. If any of my techniques aren't working, this allows me the time and distance to wait. I don't, I'm not immediately forced into a fight that I don't want to be in. With other types of takedowns, if I'm trying to grab and sweep and do different things and he grabs me, once he grabs me, if I realize I don't want to be in this fight, it's already too late. He has access to all my weapons, all my tools. That's why we avoid wrestling type takedowns also. Uh, almost every wrestling takedown exposes my waist, my gun, uh, my taser, all my different tools and it forces me to have a much higher skill set than he has. So the idea behind this concept is I'm gonna stay outside the elbow, and by staying outside the elbow, I prevent myself from being grabbed. If at any point I feel the need to disengage because I'm not able to gain control, I can disengage, switch to a different tool, or wait on backup. Next technique we're gonna go over is some basic takedown techniques uh, that employ the same principle. So the first in our series of three takedowns that we teach from the position we were just previously talking about, with any takedown or any type of control technique, I don't want to stand directly in front of somebody and allow them to use all four of their tools, those hands, feet, they can kick me, punch me, everything that they can do to me, I can do to them. Uh, it's a fair fight. I want to avoid a fair fight, so I always want to change an angle, and I want to stay at a minimum Outside of arm's distance, I need them. I want them to have to take a step if they're going to touch me or try to make contact with me in any way. From here, I want to create a, a barrier where my hands are up between me and them. Uh, for law enforcement, rather than raising my hands up in a fighting position, he raises his hands up in a fighting position. It looks like two guys just agreeing to fight. I like to keep both hands open. My hands are between my face and his, and I'm trying to de-escalate the situation. Once I realize I'm not gonna be able to de-escalate the situation and I need to take him down in order to gain compliance and take him, take him into custody or do whatever we need to do, I'm, the first, my first technique is gonna be a step forward and I'm gonna touch his face and try to cover his eyes. Uh, we found that by covering their eyes, rather than trying to fight with us, they always wanna just get my hand away from their face. This puts his arms in a predictable position every time where I know I can grab his arm right here. We're gonna do the grip breaks that we worked on in a previous video. I'm gonna circle underneath, grab his wrist with both hands, and I'm gonna shove that toward his face. His natural instinct when I shove that toward his face is to push away. Also, to disrupt his balance, I'm gonna step, I'm gonna put my hip and push his hip away while I pull his arm across my body. My elbow clamps down, and I'm putting all of my weight on my chest and pulling up on his arm at the same time. From this position, I'm just gonna to drop to my knee, Slowly get my elbow on the ground, and I'm going to sit out. Once I sit out here, my armpit is putting weight on his shoulder. My chest is still applying pressure to his elbow, and I'm pulling up on his wrist. His level of resistance is going to determine how hard I press down and pull and put pressure on his elbow. Okay, let's take a look at that again. My hands are going to be up between me and him. I'm at a distance outside of his uh, arm's length and I'm gonna step off to an angle. I'm gonna step off to my strong side. When I make my approach, I'm gonna immediately approach, touch, try to cover his eyes, grab his wrist, this grip break if I need to. 
two hands on one, pushing toward his face. Use my hip to disrupt his balance by pushing his hip away and pulling this arm across my body. Clamp down with my elbow over his shoulder, chest pressure on his elbow, pulling up on the wrist. From here, I can go down to a knee, and then I just slide my leg out in front of me so I have a good solid base with both legs. My weight of my armpit is on his shoulder. I have chest pressure on his elbow. I'm pulling up on his wrist. His level of resistance at this point determines how much pressure I put on his elbow to maintain control. And I still have 360 degree awareness. See if there's anybody else coming to try to fight me or free him. So obviously after, anytime I have to take down a suspect, I'm gonna have to get him in handcuffs at some point. So we're gonna go into the transition from the takedown to the cuffing procedure that we went over earlier. And hands up, change the angle, get two hand grip, shove the hand toward the face, make him push away, drive the hip away, pull the arm, clamp the elbow, pressure on his elbow with my chest, drop to a knee. We end our takedown. From this position, as soon as I can get him to be more compliant, stop trying to fight from here, the hand closest to his shoulder is just gonna slide down directly to his shoulder. I'm gonna put all my weight on there, use that to stand up, turn his hand behind his back. My left knee is gonna go right in front of his trap. My right heel is gonna go underneath his elbow. I'm gonna control his hand. I still have 360 degree awareness and we're back to our prone handcuffing position we went over earlier. Okay, so we're gonna hit this technique from a different angle. From the takedown position. Solid, check 360 degrees. The hand closest to his shoulder, it's gonna slide, I'm gonna post on his shoulder and use that to stand up. My leg goes right next to his body. The other knee drops over his trap. His elbow's resting on my heel, I have control, and my knee's on his hips, and I still have 360 degree awareness, and we can go into our cuffing procedure. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed that content, we have more videos over here for you to check out. For those of you looking to enhance your knowledge, make sure that you go over to EliteU.com, where you will have early release of YouTube videos and access to exclusive content. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.